you know, I would say the, the biggest challenge was probably not, not really just getting places right or um, getting an understanding of what the day-to-day -day look like day-to-day -day life look like. I, I think I could do that by reading a, a lot of the literature I did, especially Ronaldo Arenas. Um, but getting a sense of, you know, that sort of Cuban mindset and that Cuban psychology of, you know, especially the 1980s, which were a pretty turbulent time. We, the, you know, the, the country had seen the, the promise of the revolution not come to fruition in all the ways that they had hoped it would. Um, and we're battling with then their relationship with the USSR. Uh, and so the economy was having trouble. Uh, the, the social structures were, were putting more inhibitions on its citizenry um, and trying to understand how you move about in that culture uh, where in America we have a, a greater set of freedoms and mobilities and so I think entering that mindset was probably the most difficult challenge for me. Just uh, just lucky. I mean it was just this whole writing process has been really fortuitous. I, um, that, that, that first book was just a little novella um, about 60 pages long, um, and that I thought was going to be just a 20-page short story. So I, I have a, obviously have a problem with overwriting, um, but you know this one I knew I I knew going in that I was going to try for a bigger manuscript, you know, something that would be around 80 and 100 pages. And so I think what happened is I let myself, you know, sometimes you you're trying to figure out which characters need to step to the front of the stage. Um, and I think with the early drafts of this one, I let them all come to the forefront at different points. And once you do that, um, in very good ways, they all, they all establish their own narratives and their own conflicts and their own wants and their own needs. Um, and so it, needed, it started to require the space of the novel to really deal with both their individual problems and then their dynamic as a family, as a human family, that, that leaves and comes back together eventually. I've been fortunate this past year to uh, start, a, start a new book, a new novel, and to try to finish a short story collection. And especially with the short story collection, you get to see, you know, it's about Cuba and Cuban history, and you get to see all the different ways you've, you've sort of approached it. Um, and the things that, that keep popping up now, and especially in the new work, are faith, faith certainly on, the, on an individual and sort of a mystical level like we saw with Isabel. Um, and then also that the, the weird question of just what does it mean to be Cuban, you know? I think with the, the, the mortifications, um, that Cubanness gets tied to memory and what you remember and what you hold on to. Uh, but with the newer work, um, you know, I find myself wanting to investigate those ideas of how do you assert your identity, you know? How do you, um, how do you make an identity apparent to those around you? Um, and is that, when does that become sort of standing in a sphere in which you belong and when does that become abuse? Um, and can it become abuse, right? Can you abuse your own identity for certain ends? Uh, the, new, the new thing that I'm working on is about a, uh, a Cuban-American swimmer who I think at one point fails to make the American team and so he defects to Cuba to swim for them. Um, and so I want to deal with a little bit more those questions directly and a little bit more uh, what are really honestly just my own anxieties about Cuban authenticity or feeling authentic as a Cuban. The Cubans, especially in America, who have grown up um, you know, first and second generation Cuban Americans who've grown up in America and outside of, you know, the uh, the reach of that government uh, in a lot of ways. Not to say they aren't affected by it, but they don't live in that culture. Um, those folk, include myself included, now will have an opportunity to find uh, to connect with, you know, this generation, this young generation of Cubans in Cuba and their kids, um, in the sense that we will all be in some way post or outside of Castro, you know? Um, and we won't um, in many ways be, it will be easier for us to perhaps separate the direction of the country or how our relations should work from, you know, the lightning rods of those figureheads than it was for generations beforehand. Um, so in that way, I'm very hopeful. In other ways, you know, I'm, I'm still, I am very worried about what happens now and uh, to those people and what happens to to Cubans if, you know, the what feels like big but still very incremental change that we've accomplished in the last two years in, between U.S. and Cuba relations, um, if that gets rolled back and, and what happens to not just isolating ourselves but then as a result isolating Cuba further.